Welcome back to Bay Sunday. We've been hearing a lot of murmurs about blackballing in the NFL with Colin Kaepernick these days. We'll see what happens there. Meantime, former Oakland A's pitcher, all-star and gold glover Mike Norris has written a new book about his own experiences called Blackballed Twice. He's here in the studio this morning. Welcome to Bay Sunday. Mike, let's start off with, with your childhood growing up here in San Francisco and then your journey to Major League Baseball. What was it like growing up in the city and, and your journey? Well, I grew up the in the Western Coast. Edition, but prior to that was called the Fillmore District. And it was uh, predominantly black. And I grew up in um, the projects. And uh, being that they had uh, maybe at least 200 kids to play with, so there was always an opportunity to play sports a lot. And then uh, right across the street was a park that we had the base, best baseball park in the city. So that was a natural for me to go out and play baseball. Yeah, so at 19 years old, you make it to the major leagues after a, a short stint in the minor leagues. And then you had a great season in 1980. And then what happened after that? Well, um, a lot of people want to blame it on the Billy Martin uh, pitched us too much. But we did consume an awful lot of innings, but we were on a pitch, we were on pitch counts and we pitched every fifth day. So I don't think that constituted, I think the strike in 1981 hurt us uh, when we had to, we were out 60 over 60 days and no strike had lasted over 30 days. So we got out of shape and then we came back and after my second start, I pitched a 14 inning game. Yeah, 14 inning game, that doesn't happen anymore. We went downhill after that with right. my arm. And then you, there was a time in your life when addiction was also a part of your life. What happened that led you to that road? Well, you, you start off with the painkillers. You know, you, you, you have to do what you have to do to go out and perform. And they might start off from anything is from Excedrin, you know, to aspirin, and then finally you'll, you'll graduate to a, a Vicodin. And those aren't easy to get. And the next thing you know, somebody introduces you to cocaine, and then there's the addiction which is the greatest mistake I ever made in my life. And that was a problem with, with, with a lot of Major League Baseball players in that time it in became the early a, 80s, mid 80s. It became an epidemic. Mm -hmm. um, it was an infestation for sure. And uh, I'd probably say about a third of the league was in, indulging. And uh, so the commission of baseball called in the FBI to clean it up, which they did a great job. And in, in about two years, it was pretty much gone. Mm -hmm. You must have gone through a lot of difficult times during, during that time. What's your central message in this book that you've written and to some of the children out there who are going to try to play Major League Baseball one day? Well, and first of all, you can't let peer pressure get in the way of your career. You have to remain dedicated. What you did to get there is what you're going to have to do to stay there. And I'm sure uh, you didn't consummate yourself with drugs and alcohol before you got there in an immensity but it's all prevalent when you get to the big leagues. Everything is, is, is in a greater existence for you. And things and opportunities are easier for you to, to, to take advantage of. So you have to have discipline. All right. African Americans playing baseball now, what, what is the percentage? And um, what, what do you think is a problem? Because there's a lack of, uh, of African Americans playing Major League Baseball. Well, first of all, my belief and my theory, and I've pretty much proved it in my book. Uh, there was a machination in baseball, a conspiracy against blacks. And uh, the commissioner of baseball, Peter Ubroff, was responsible for these actions. And there was collusion between he and, uh, and the rest of the owners in Major League Baseball in which they were caught. And so this was back in 1985. So uh, I was blackballed from 1985 until eight, 1990. Mm -hmm. I was out of baseball. Mm -hmm. so. I had no business being base blackballed because I wasn't on a suspension list. There was a group of three different groups, and I was in group three. So all I was supposed to do was go to a drug clinic for 30 days, and then I was supposed to be back in the baseball. But four years later, I was still out of baseball, so I was blackballed. Right. So you're blackballed twice. Twice. So the second time they brought me back was to collect an insurance policy. So the greed of themselves is the reason why I came back. They uh, the, I, I believe the insurance policy could have been more up to five to ten million dollars. They paid me a hundred thousand dollars a minimum to come back and then release me halfway during the season after they won the judgment with the deposition. Yeah. Your central message from this book, what have you learned while writing this book? Well, there's racism in baseball just like America is, is equivalent and um, there's a lot of exploitation which I'm not real happy and pleased with the Latin ball players which they use to 
make a reduction for the for the for the African American ball players. So the, the Latin ball players have just basically replaced the African American ball players. In my day, we were 19% African American, and then Latins were 6%, and that's that that number is flip flop right. now. Mike, you've you've been doing a lot of great work also here in the Bay Area, working with a lot of kids. Tell us about your foundation. And the well, program. that's my love right now, and I think I owe that back to the community, and because uh, this is what I plan to do was to help my community. So right now, I have a a Pitch to Success Foundation, and uh, it's an after-school program, and it deals with the dysfunction that kids go through with the bullying and gangs and things of that nature. I'm a, I'm a stickler on education, nutrition, and mentoring, and I think those concepts are what will help a kid progress in life, and college is their goal. That's what I try to do. All right, Mike, thank you so much for joining us here this morning on Bay Sunday. Thanks, Kenny, for having sure. me. I enjoyed it. Again, the book is called Blackballed Twice, Mike Norris, Tells it like it is, and it's available on Amazon. Still ahead, some phenomenal jazz is coming to the East Bay when Bay Sunday continues.